Hey everyone, Astronaut98 here. Today we are talking about For All Mankind's North Korean Mars mission. So, why are we starting off this video with the launch of an R-16, which is clearly a Russian design? Well, it's not exactly known for its reliability in historic or any other uh, historical documents. I mean, it was actually literally the cause of the Nettling catastrophe. So my theory is, Russia, wanting to dispose of it, would spirit parts away to North Korea, because North Korea would likely be trying to improve its space launch capabilities. This is shown and precedented by the fact that Russia was selling its uh, docking guidance computer, the uh, KERS module, I think it was called in the show, to other countries, such as North Korea, and also China, and America, more specifically Helios, but that's beside the point. So, here we are, showing a demonstration test with an empty payload fairing from the North Korean launch site, which I've selected based on latitude choices, not because of the name. I know it is the Woomera launch site, which should be on a south southern continent. That's just my opinion, but what do I know? So, here we go. We have this semi-successful test, minus the uh, rough start at the beginning. And then here we have the uh, launch of the North Korean satellite that would have happened at the beginning of Season 3. I'm theorizing they would have used an R-16 and used a very lightweight satellite. So, upon satellite attempting to separate, it would have exploded, leaving debris to impact with the Helios station. Not Helios, P Polaris station. My bad. So, eventually, North Korea would have gotten a satellite to orbit. Some satellite, you know, whatever. It could... It could be a radio transmitter with a battery, for all I care. But, here we go. So, my theory is, you cluster four R-16s together, take the second stage, and leave that as it is, or you cluster four of those together as well. This is Kerbal, so I just went with smaller vehicle better. So, and then you put another cluster, or single second stage, on top of that to allow you to dock your Zond module to it to boost you off to Mars's orbit. Now, in the show, it is said that they probably rendezvoused to refuel the probe. That does not seem very likely to me, because rendezvousing just to refuel is a very risky operation, especially for a starting space program. I mean, very risky. So, here we are, launching of the North Korean Zond capsule. Ever so slowly, because it's a very heavy craft. Uh, all craft files will be on Kerbal X, by the way. And if you are enjoying this video, do hit that like and subscribe button. And ring the bell if you want to get notifications when I release new videos. But now that we've got that mess out of the way, we then watch this vehicle. We have also designed this to be throttled down to about half thrust. So that way it doesn't get too high of acceleration on the crew. You want to keep that under 4 G's. Most pilots can survive 6 eyeballs in, but I don't care to excruciate my kerbals. So, upon first stage separation, the second stage will burn to depletion. And then you use a little bitty uh, Block D module, as I like to call it. Because it kind of reminds me of the Block D module on the uh, N1 spacecraft that I built a couple years back. So, here we are. We're docking with the upper stage booster to send us all the way to Mars. Three, two, one, go! Off we go into the wild dark yonder. Off we go into the black. And then you just coast your way all the way to Mars. Eating lots and lots of canned tuna. At least that's what it looked like to me. Could be chicken for all I know. It's hard to tell what what's in a can, am I right? <laughs> Though most people will probably eat dog food if they're hungry enough. I know I will. 
Alright, here we go on the uh, approach to Duna. Coasting ever so closer. Now, in the show, it's mentioned that they uh, burned their service module a bit. I did not, because I wanted to uh, have a bit of a hotter reentry, so we get those beautiful flames licking at the side of the capsule. And then, I also had to uh, decrease the amount of thrust the uh, solid rocket motors produce in change the altitude at which the parachutes deploy. But because KSP doesn't simulate uh, soft, soft ground, and you can't exactly do a uh, augering in landing. Granted, I was moving at maybe 20 meters per second when this hit the ground. I had to disable impact, but our one Kerbal survived. The other one is dead, buried somewhere. But if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts and comments below. I release a new video every other week for your viewing pleasure. I'm the astronaut. Let's fly and tune in for the Halloween special.